Hello guys, my name is Amit Sani and I welcome you in this daily Hindu Nals video. In the morning these videos come, in the evening PIB videos come, don't leave any lesson. I have increased the number of MCQs and the facts also and I am discussing them uh, according to the prelims pattern. So these lessons, upcoming lessons are going to be very very important in the next two months. So 20th of March and uh, only 10 days are left in this month also. You see how fast the time is running. Now. Uh, let's start with the motivation today in the realm of ideas everything depends on enthusiasm but in the real world all rests on perseverance two words enthusiasm energy and interest two things combinedly they make enthusiasm and it can be a pushing factor it can be an ignition for a great start but you see you work enthusiastically but not for the long period of uh, time because when you have bigger goals and uh, the goal like UPSC and uh, the preparation uh, which is there for years, you need enthusiasm in the start. But enthusiasm cannot take you for years. Perseverance is the thing that is really applied here. And if you can understand this deep meaning word, perseverance, sacrifice is the basis of it. And consistent and controlled level of energy patience and you see controlled emotions are also very very important that means emotional intelligence it is also a topic in, uh, under GS paper 4 what does that mean emotional intelligence means you have to control your emotions when you are going towards happiness so you should not go towards the extreme you should control your emotions positive emotions and when you are uh, going towards the hopelessness towards negativity towards sadness then also you need to control your emotions so it's the controlled emotional state that is also a precondition of perseverance otherwise perseverance would not be possible so sacrifice control energetic condition controlled energetic condition and this emotional intelligence and the consistency you you uh, will be able to maintain only with the uh, trait of sacrifice so that is the thing with perseverance and uh, reality in the real world winners they go on the path of perseverance okay so if you can understand this uh, particular thing this can be the most important learning of your life these are the numbers you can call on these numbers and uh, uh, the updated upsc course is also available all other courses pendrive courses all are updated one they are available here and uh, you see time is running very fast so uh, with a few thousand rupees you can prepare for the best rankings in india in these uh, competitive examinations Brew tribe is mainly a group in. You see, Brew tribe, it is also called Riang as a name. And you see, in the state of Mizoram and in some uh, adjoining states also, these were found. But in 1997, there was ethnic violence in the state of Mizoram. And the Mizo group, they protested heavily against the Riang or the Brew groups. Brew, the name uh, is given to the Riang tribe in Mizoram state okay so they protested heavily against them and they said that these people should be thrown out uh, they are taking our uh, particular uh, share of resources or any kind of uh, power share so they were pushed outside the state and they settled in the state of tripura in camps and right now they are among one of the 25 tribal groups of tripura and uh, now uh, central government has uh, directed the state government of Mizoram that you consider the brew tribes name in the electoral rules. So now this issue is again on a boil and you see in the states of northeast India these all issues of ethnicity and uh, the citizenship amendment bill is going on and the NRC exercise all these things are based on the uh, based on the rights issue and the uh, ethnic issues and people become very aggressive regarding them so they anytime can destroy the peace in these states and that is very very crucial because these are sensitive areas areas near to china so mizoram is the answer here and next domestic systematically important banks i had explained you this issue that uh, too big to fail if any company is declared that means government would not let these companies fail uh, anytime soon or uh, very easily if there are going to be any kind of problems financial problems then state is going to support these 
banks or these companies so too big to fail means uh, uh, like SBI, ICICI and SDFC. These banks are actually declared as, as uh, DSIBs and two of them are private banks. Remember that. So none of the above is the right answer here because uh, all these three, three things uh, they don't mean uh, to be DSIBs. Next, coffee canifora known as Robusta coffee. This statement is correct. Around 80% coffee is Robusta coffee. And in India, Arabica coffee is grown. Uh, various varieties of Arab Arabica coffee is uh, grown in these states. And recently, uh, all these varieties, they have been given the GI tag status. Okay, so that's why it was in current affairs. So in India, mainly in the southern states, the Arabica coffee is grown, not Robusta. So this statement would be wrong. Only one is the correct answer here. Now let's move towards uh, these words in the vocabulary as I found you try them into sentences and let's move towards articles. This article a repeated issue many times we had discussed these uh, uh, particular topics and you see uh, nothing new is gi being given here by Rakesh Sood. He only says that uh, things are not a big change after Balakot incident and somehow these all things are uh, in a way dissipated now and uh, status quo is maintained again the things the conditions the support to these terror groups uh, terror fundings uh, by the state of pakistan these things are still existing and not much change we have seen and the support from saudi arabia uae that has gone more in favor of pakistan and uh, we declared these strikes as non-military and preemptive so not much we can do about it if we want to assess this uh, thing that uh, any kind of uh, impact is there on the Pakistan's military, then it is not. Because we declared them as non-military and preemptive strikes. So not much impact is there on the Pakistan's military. That is the real power wielder. So uh, the, uh, the, uh, the support to these groups by military and all and uh, the state also. So that is going to be consistent and uh, not big change we see today only rhetorics only political campaigning only uh, anyhow exploiting this issue is going on and in the rallies we are using them heavily but not much uh, change that is there okay so we will not uh, uh, give time to this particular article uh, although it is important for gs paper 2 and 3 and next this article we are going to discuss it is talking about a very important model in the education system and in the system both so niti ayog ceo amitabh kant uh, he talks about it. So GS paper 2 is going to be important here. This article is uh, regarding the Kyiv that is the capital of Ukraine. So regarding that a lot of uh, international issues are going on. So not important uh, for us uh, for the examination and go on uh, a that is uh, a political one. So it is also not important for us. Only the thing that is important is uh, when prime minister or a chief minister, if they die during their tenure, then what kind of conditions may develop here? You see, uh, there is a condition uh, where uh, governor or president may dissolve Lok Sabha or the Vidhan Sabha if no successor is visible. Before that, they would explore options the way they have explored this time and uh, one leader is given by the party and now they have declared him as their chief minister but he has to prove his majority on the floor. So now it's a tough time for uh, uh, Mr. Savan because he has been declared and now he is to prove the majority. But it is not going to be simple because in the last uh, elections also when Parika became the chief minister, more seats were there with Congress and BJP won less seats. But still out of uh, some adjustment, they uh, made their government. And after that, uh, when uh, this unfortunate incident happened, when a very simple and very uh, important personality like Mr. Parikar who was the educated person among these politicians and uh, he died soon and uh, this uh, a particular controversy erupted and now the majority is to be proven. So this is not important for us. This is also not important for us because it is regarding the Ayodhya Mandir's issue and uh, what uh, is the past what Gandhiji said about him and what is the value uh, we wanted to achieve after independence and how we are going so this is regarding that not important for us but if you are going to analyze these situations according to a neutral attitude then these things 
may be uh, adding something in your social understanding so that is how it is important as a gs paper one issue okay next this particular article we are going to discuss it is talking about the condition of forest dwellers and uh, some troubles by authorities and how they are cheating these forest dwellers and in the past what they have been doing and now what is the status okay so we are going to discuss this particular article important for gs paper 2 okay next on the learning curve amitabh khan says that uh, if we talk about the education department because it's under the state list in schedule 7 there are lists union list state list and concurrent list so under state list the educational topic comes and if we talk about the state services educational uh, employees means uh, these are uh, teachers are unarguably these are the largest share and if anything that comes innovative as a solution or anything that raises the efficiency of the administrative setup then nothing can be better than that and it is coming from the edu educational setup then it is the best thing it is talking about a particular model of haryana where they started a particular scheme of declaring saksham to whom these administrative blocks by these state officials they said that if 80 percent or more students who are grade level competent and these are skilled then you can declare your administrative block as saksham one means skilled one or able one so saksham block and now it became a race among these officials and they all tried their best to declare their uh, block as saksham because you see there are incentives and these people will be honored by uh, chief minister and they will be recognized and there would be a grand ceremony for these uh, officials so it was a race and you see this is a practical method because it is targeting the local level and it's a manageable situation for these officials if you may, you are making a national scheme or state scheme then the implementation becomes very hectic and how we are going to coordinate these mechanisms and uh, how these people are going to execute these plans so the coordination matters a lot and that time many faults many loopholes are there so we cannot give any guarantee there but here it is a small uh, block and that is targeted so this kind of focused manner we need today so that is why these kind of innovations we need in the administration okay so this is one of the most important things for the ups examination so here large scale show and tell event would be there and these people would be honored and you see uh, they would become much more confident and you see it's a giant leap in the learning outcomes because the way of assessment is also very important and Amitabh Khan says that uh, a political commitment that is the basis of it political will is needed at first and then the mindset is changed and when people earlier used to say that uh, these things are not possible and uh, we are uh, putting our efforts in vain but anyhow they are also becoming confident because of that because the way is innovative and the process is focused okay so learning outcomes are mattering here that is important and here uh, the Niti Aayog as a body that says that we always believe in competitive federalism and that's a positive competition and they uh, have developed a school education quality index in that they are assessing the educational status of these schools according to some data sources like they have 33 indicators and that measure education outcomes and learning outcomes have largest weight as a 48 percent and twofold ranking system is there where well performing states via an overall performing score they will be ranked and there would be a delta ranking also means according to a base year they will take a base year and uh, according to some base uh, uh, particular uh, score they would assess that how much they have improved so these kind of rankings are innovative and they are certainly gonna help and these are actually a practical idea where report cards are being given then all these institutions all these states all these uh, administrative departments they will become aware and they will be afraid of these uh, report cards so they will be stressed and they will be working with more efficiency and will with much more focus okay so that is the thing and uh, district program the aspirational district program that was run by niti io it was started in early 2018 that has also given great outcomes here because five crucial sectors in these aspirational districts they were recognized what are these aspirational districts where underserved uh, districts are there so 112 uh, 112 districts they were 
targeted so it is again a targeted approach and you see it is a kind of a situation where uh, uh, we discuss reservation so it is a kind of a reservation like situation where we are focusing the weaker uh, weaker districts under sub districts but it should be executed in a letter and spirit not like the situation of a reservation in india okay that has become political and uh, many controversies are there but this is the administrative uh, situation and administ in administration uh, a scenario these focused manner they work a lot so they have got great outcomes out of this aspirational districts program so they may ask you in the prelims also that adp is run by niti ayog so 30% weightage is there in these five crucial sectors that they identified is for education means in these specific targeted weak districts they are targeting education a lot so that is how these are monitored real time and ranked respective ministry in charge they are going to take care of other things and uh, total data is going to be compiled uh, is going to be assessed by niti ayog all these compilations and report that would be assessed by niti ayog so final report would be made by niti ayog so you see this is how it's a aligned system and they are going to assess these things practically and that is how it is given outcome and the learning is that the right incentive structure for stakeholders led to administrative efficiency okay so this is a kind of a perfect model you can write a great mains answer uh, from this particular article one of the most important article for ups examination for the mains next disempowering gram sabhas as i told you important for gs paper 2 and here uh, the writer says that uh, Forest Forest Conservation Act it came in 1980 and in 1988 some policy also came so after that out of the loopholes of this act much more forest land has been diverted for the non forest use and through this method we uh, we as administration have already evicted lakhs of forest dwellers and this was the situation that is why forest right act that became necessary in 2006 and that actually recognized many rights of these forest dwellers so this was very very important gram sabhas were given uh, importance here and they were given some power that if any kind of project mining project or something like that that would come as a proposal then these, these gram sabhas are going to give uh, consent for that and then only it is going to be possible so you see in 2006 we gave the right in 2009 uh many more regulations additional regulations they came and they actually bolstered the case for gram sabhas and they recognized more powers for them so these were positive steps but you see after 10 years many regional cases and mainly in, in these tribal areas they have appeared where some cheating is going on with these people already these people were stressed because of these regulations and these uh, forest conservation act rules loopholes and uh, when in uh, 2019 on february 13 supreme court also gave this uh, harsh words and it said that uh, uh, evict these people but anyhow they stayed the order and uh, next hearing is in july so till that time uh, we need to ponder over the situation you see how authorities are cheating people in the case of odisha proposal whereby the odisha mining corporation and it sought 1400 acres of forest land across seven adivasi villages of keonjar in the ecologically sensitive gandha mardan mountains for an iron ore mine this was the case and they needed this uh, uh, in principle consent what these people did they actually uh, forged these documents here okay and how they made it possible to get the 1400 acres of land to get diverted towards these mining giants they made it possible and when this issue came out that uh, how this thing was possible that seven uh, gram sabhas their declaration and their writings are almost similar how this thing is possible then they gave this argument that uh, one uh, official uh, uh, who uh, collected all these uh, certifications and all and uh, he was one person so this was similar but anyhow this issue came out and these ngos and in these uh, particular groups who are working for these adivasis they brought out this matter and it was seen that uh, this was totally a case of forgery and they anyhow made uh, these false documents where the consent was given 
actually these this thing came as a shock and rage for these people they said that we could never give this particular consent and uh, we were not discussed about that about that actually we were not even given the details of it and this case also appeared in some other uh, environmental magazines also so uh, here uh, it is the case where authorities are cheating these people and you see what the center government did after that they actually what they did they effective, effectively ensured that forest diversion is a given and the only sanctioned role for Adivasis and forest dwellers is that of mute rubber stamps means in principle approval for divergence is not needed this thing was uh, actually tried by Ministry of Environment and uh, Forest and that is uh, climate change also so MOEF actually tried to formalize this particular travesty and they said that uh, this in principle appro approvals, are, approvals are not needed and they are quoting this particular incident where they produce the forged documents so this is how many questions are raised you see these uh, naxalism problem that is also going on in the same area where uh, all these minings and all all these are going on and many people who are actually working in these areas these are declared as naxals and uh, urban naxals and they uh, they are hailed as anti-nationals and all in the past so these kind of revelations these kind of uh, uh, exposes they actually raise these questions against our government and authorities that in which way they are working and what is their int intention that is totally clear that how they are trying to divert these lands and they are giving it to these giants these uh, uh, mncs and these uh, mining giants and all and they are favoring them a lot and they are evicting these uh, poor people and you see supreme court's decision is also under uh, particular uh, questioning because how it could say in those harsh words that evict these people at any cost because it is so insensitive and already we have seen that how these people are being cheated and uh, since 1980s there has been a lot of problem and their coexistence is never a problem for the forest or the diversity there but this thing is posed like hell and you see recently we saw a 30 kilometer march uh, in Chhattisgarh also in Hasdevar and uh, against Ministry of Environment Forest where they diverted 2000 acres to a uh, a particular uh, uh, mining giant and despite the condition where Gram Sabha it complained about a forgery that we did not give any kind of consent and some false documents were created and those were submitted and these were they were produced as a clearance of it so this is how it's a clear cheating case and how these people these poor people are being targeted here so this is very very unfortunate and we need to ponder over the situation and a very fair deal of uh, discussion and debate is needed here but just opposite is happening in the national media they actually hail government's moves they actually uh, support these uh, cases of uh, Ambani Adani always indirectly and uh, you see they will only show uh, these informations which are favorable for the authorities and the government that is problematic and it is clearly seen that how they are ensuring that the power remains with the government and the authorities and these people they should be evicted out of here and uh, these uh, provisions of uh, forest uh, rights act actually forest dwellers rights act of 2006 they are totally violated okay so this is the thing next uh, pinaki chandra goes appointed first lokpal as i told you one chairperson and eight members out of eight four would be judicial four would be non-judicial so the list is given here for the non-judicial and judicial members and uh, people are coming from all walks of life and as i told you historic responsibility is there with these people how they are going to perform here because uh, uh, a lot of institutions are under a lot of pressure and their working has been not independent uh, not independent so we have to see how they are performing now next india reaches out to mozambique the cyclone idai that has created havoc here and it has taken thousands of lives so we have sent our forces there and the aid which is necessary here because of mozambique as i uh, told you earlier also africa and it is uh, madagascar and mozambique country is located here and this support uh, uh, vera 
is very famous here it is here and mozambique is the country there is a oceanic current mozambique current also that is a warm current okay so this is the area of warm current that is why cyclones are a major trouble here and the cyclone hidai has been uh, devastating here next builders get gst leave till march 31 you see there was a provision when this gst was implemented that the completed buildings they would not invite any kind of gst but the ongoing under construction uh, real estate buildings they uh, were charged 12% of gst plus they were given the advantage of input tax credit now what is input tax credit as i told you explained you earlier also you suppose first iron is mined and uh, this iron has some value and out of this iron steel was made and uh, the existing value of iron is uh, added to it and then out of the steel some steel rods or sheets are cre created so they are also having uh, the value of this iron and this steel so this value addition is there and the value for these rods is going to be higher but you see if somebody is gonna buy steel here and somebody is gonna buy iron here so the first buyer is gonna pay money for iron and it is gonna pay gst on that here it pays gst but before gst what used to happen here there was a cascading impact the value was added every time and every time they paid tax on this amount and every on every stage the tax is paid but that money that money of tax that was added to the uh, to this item and it was propagated as the higher value in the next step so in the last uh, phase uh, when at the end points if somebody is buying some product then it is paying a lot of money and whole uh, 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 value of uh, taxes which was taken at every step that was added in the final products value and that was paid by consumer so it was a cascading impact so this input tax credit system that came in gst where if somebody is going to buy iron and it is going to pay gst then it is going to uh, uh, get a receipt here that it has paid some amount as uh, as tax this receipt is going to be given to the next person okay and uh, a second buyer who is going to buy this steel he is not going to pay tax on the amount or the value of iron because that amount has been paid okay so the rest of the amount would be paid as taxes and he would also get some receipt of it and these receipts are going to be propagated and the third buyer is gonna pay only for that amount which is as the addition in the existing value so uh, this is how these uh, tax receipts are gonna be important here and this is the system of input tax credit so in the new system where they have proposed to lower the gst rates recently and uh, existing rates were 12 percent plus input tax credit uh, provision was there and now they have removed this itc and tax rates are low so government is giving this uh, particular proposal to these uh, real uh, estate uh, builders that you can choose any one of them because you see it's a huge issue lakhs of rupees crores of rupees are invested in the real estate sector when we buy properties then uh, this much money is needed so even 1% 0.5% that adds up to lakhs of rupees of uh, amount so that's not a small issue any uh, small change in these rates that gonna impact any common person so that is why it is an option here that that whether you take the advantage of itc or uh, uh, plus 12 percent of the taxes or the lower rate is going to be applied here so this is on these builders how they are going to choose it a lot of things are going on after gst and mainly the uh, the major sector that was hit here that was a real estate sector okay next brazilian physicist wins 1.4 million dollar templeton prize you see spirituality is not a concept in the nobel prize system okay and uh, the similar thing is there with the maths also okay in the area of mathematics there is able prize that is called nobel of maths that's a different one and in the area of spirituality and science there is templeton prize okay so mr marcelo greiser he is uh, a physicist and he said that uh, 
साइंस एंड स्पिरिचुअलिटी दे आर नॉट अगेंस्ट ईच अदर दे शुड बी एक्चुअली सपोर्टिव ऑफ ईच अदर सो दिस थ्योरी हैज बीन अवॉर्डेड हियर एंड दिस प्राइज इज एक्चुअली हायर देन द नोबेल प्राइज मनी ओके सो टेम्पल्टन प्राइज फॉर द स्पिरिचुअलिटी एंड द साइंस एंड द विनर इज मार्सलो ग्लाइजर इट वॉज स्टार्टेड वे बैक इन नाइनटीन सेवेंटी टू आई थिंक एंड फर्स्ट विनर वॉज मदर टेरिसा एंड आई थिंक दलाई लमा हेज ऑल्सो गॉट दिस अवॉर्ड एंड आर फर्स्ट वाइस प्रेजिडेंट मिस्टर सर्वपल्ली राधा कृष्णन ही वॉज ऑल्सो अवॉर्डेड दिस टेम्पल्टन प्राइज फॉर वॉट फॉर हिज पॉलिसी ऑफ नॉन अग्रेशन टूवर्ड्स पाकिस्तान सो फॉर दैट ही वॉज गिवन द टेम्पल्टन प्राइज सो इंडियंस हैव ऑल्सो हैव ऑल्सो वॉन दिस पर्टिकुलर अवॉर्ड ओके नेक्स्ट एज आई टोल्ड यू एवल प्राइज that is called the nobel of mathematics because the mathematics as a topic was not considered under the nobel peace system nobel prize system so karen olen back important is she is the first woman in this world who has got this abel prize because in the mathematics area uh, it was uh, uh, considered that uh, males are having the brains for mathematics but now karen olen back she has uh, broken this barrier and, and she receives the abel prize for 2019 year and for her fundamental work in geometric analysis and gauss theory so that's very very important and it's a revolutionary uh, achievement uh, uh, for uh, science and her contribution is really really awesome so this prize is going to go to her and uh, she is the first woman and uh, you see these awards they were started way back in 2001 so it was very late because it was named after the 19th century norwegian mathematician niels henrik abel and uh, he was born in 1802 and in 1899 when discussions were going on regarding the nobel prizes then it was considered that maths should be there but they did not uh, uh, accept this idea and after a century in 2001 these were started and no indian till now has got the abel prize and this was criticized a lot in a article in january also one indo american he is not indian now he is uh, an american citizen now sr srinivasa vardhan has got this prize in 2007 okay so he is the only indian associated with this mathematics nobel or the abel prize that's important and in the university of oslo that is the uh, oslo is the capital of norway there only this award is given next mcqs try their answers i have increased the number of mcqs and try to find the additional data it is going to be asked directly in the prelims this year i'm telling you again and again okay so thanks a lot pdf you will get on the, the telegram channel and on the facebook group the link is given there thanks a lot send me a request i would approve thanks a lot